Hey guys, so I have really been looking forward to making this video for you. You guys will have heard me mention Kropbrag before, I think at least a few times. And finally, I have made this, which I'm really super proud of. And I wanna talk to you about my process and how I got started and how you can learn how to do this too. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a moment in time where we come every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today, we're gonna to talk specifically about Krokbrak weaving, which is a Scandinavian kind of weaving technique uh, that I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit more about and the structure and how it works and all this kind of stuff. But Ultimately, I first started getting interested in this particular technique when I saw it on uh, Instagram, I started to see it on Pinterest, and I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole and started following this weaver in the UK. Her name is Angie Parker. You can look her up, Angie Parker Textiles, and she makes beautiful things. She's using this croak rag technique to make beautiful rugs and um, upholstery coverings, all sorts of things using this particular technique because it's so amenable to using uh, different colors, uh, amazing color combinations. It's very, very graphic. There's a lot of ways that you can use this technique. And so that's what initially uh, drew me to it. But it took me a long time to sort of wrap my head around what it is, how it works, and all sorts of things like that. So I wanna share with you um, a little bit about my whole journey with it because Recently in the school, we just launched a class with uh, Debbie Greenlaw, who has written this book, and she's written a first book. This is her second book, but the first book she wrote is also about crook bag weaving, and this one is about crook bag patterns. Um, but we invited Debbie to come to the school and teach a class on how to do crook bag weaving. And when you look at some of the projects, like you can look through this book, and there's like tons of different patterns and all sorts of things like this inside here. Just there's so many things that you can do with this technique. And I don't want you to be intimidated because I'm gonna show you, I started from the absolute easiest possible thing um, until I got to the point where I was making this and feeling really comfortable about where I was putting in yarns and what color I was gonna add next. I felt very comfortable about all of this. So. You may have seen this, maybe I showed this to you earlier, but this is a frame loom. This is an old one by Woven Wood Goods. I don't think she makes them anymore, but you know, you can get a frame loom like this. I just happened to have one lying around. And so I went away for a weekend with some friends and we were doing some crafty things, like some people were spinning and some people were knitting and some people were sewing and I was figuring out crook brag <laughs> by hand in the most manual way possible. And so you can see down here, I have a few uh, weft picks here of me trying to figure out how does this all work? So basically up here, I made myself some string heddles. So these colored yarns here, they are picking up certain warp ends in order to create the shed that I want. Okay, so this is just, I was doing this to figure out how it all works so I can pick up whichever warp ends I need in order to create the shed that I wanted down here. So once I figured this out, I went and put it on an actual loom and tried a couple of other things. So I put it on an Ashford table loom that I have at home and uh, was experimenting a lot with the different sets, how wide to put all the yarn on the, on the loom, um, what kind of yarn to put for weft, what kind of yarn to use for warp, all of these different things, different combinations, trying to figure out what's the best way to do things. So from there, from working with the table loom, I decided to set it up on my baby wolf at home. So I tied on an all linen warp to the baby wolf loom and started weaving on that. And I didn't really like what I was weaving. And so I decided to do something a little bit different. And so what I did was I took all of the warp ends and I divided them, I reslayed them and moved two sections to the side in order so I could make three coasters at a time, three really narrow warps at a time, because I wanted a chance to see how the colors uh, interact in this sort of technique. And so you can see here, these are some of the examples of the things that I wove off of that coaster project. So I can't remember exactly how I had them on the loom, but the way that I had these on the loom, they were separated by a little bit of a gap, 
and then I would just weave in one pick on this one, and then I would weave the same pick on this one and the same pick on this one. But in this case, because I had so many different colors going, I had so many different shuttles. <laughs> so I would weave in one with maybe like this ginger color, put that shuttle down, weave in another one with the magenta, put that shuttle down, weave this one with the purple, put that shuttle down, and then weave the next color in. And so I guess I had maybe two or three shuttles for each coaster going on at each time. But this really allowed me to figure out, you know, how these colors look. These are all sort of from the same uh, color palette. This cayenne color is over here as well. This purple is, no, this purple is the same as this purple. This yellow is the same as this yellow. All sort of, so the same kind of colors, just mixed and blended together, but they produce three completely different coasters um, just by rearranging the colors. I also used these coasters to really practice with my selvage technique. So this is like, looked a little bit messy. And I was trying to figure out how to do really nice selvages with croak brag. So I used these coasters, this coaster project, to experiment with different color combinations and also the technique of laying in that weft yarn and then trying to figure out how to make a really nice selvage edge. So this one is kind of still pretty thick and bulky and kind of uh, messy looking. Um, and after that, the next project that I worked on, I was able to make those selvages much nicer, but just trying to figure out how densely to pack the weft yarn as well. And um, these ones, I didn't finish really that properly. I just sewed down, uh, sewed down each end so that they wouldn't fall out. Um, I'm just using them at home as like little easy coasters. They're not really fancy and they're not really super finished, but they're a learning experiment. <laughs> so that is one of the designs that I tried. And then this is another experiment that I tried with doing different blocks and trying to make squares. And I think that as I was laying them in, I didn't make them entirely square. They look a little bit squashed. Uh, so it was just about finding the right amount of beat. Uh, these ones are a little bit softer than these ones. I think that these first ones that I made are really, I beat them quite hard. Um, the, second, the second set is a little bit more squishy and a little bit more pliable. But I learned a lot from making these coasters and experimenting with the technique. And then from there, my next project was, I basically took all of those warp ends that I had divided and moved into three different coasters and then merged them back together and made this project. So this one I am quite proud of. I'm really excited to have finished this one. So you can see this, this edge here with the cayenne where I sort of laid in a couple of picks to start with. This is uh, the beginning of the project. And uh, I just started to add colors and mix and match different color combinations. And then what I would do is I would take two of the color co colors that were in this first section and I would carry them through to the next section. So in this case, I'm carrying this magenta color to each of the sections of this uh, sort of mini rug, I guess is what I'm calling it. It's a mini rug. And there's also this ginger color that's going through all of the sections. So it provides a bit of a continuity in terms of color. So there's these two colors that are consistent throughout. And then there's some variations of some purple. So in this case, you can see like there's purples here, a dark purple and a light purple, just a light purple, just a dark purple, just a light purple, dark and a light purple. The outside edges have no purple. So what I tried to do is with each of these sections, I think there's there's seven different color sets. And with each of the color sets, I made them symmetrical from top to bottom. But within each set, I randomized the color and location of where everything was. So at some point in time, I will write up <laughs> my actual draft and my pattern for what I did and how I did it and make this into a pattern. I'll make that available for people on the school and you can download that. So that is eventually gonna be available because it could be made into a larger project. But in this case, because I was experimenting with the technique, trying to learn how to do it, how to do it well, um, I just, I, I started with nothing but a few picks of a sampler, of a test, of an experiment, and then going a little bit wider with the next project, and then going a little bit wider with the next project. And so the next project that I do, if I do another Crokebrag project, I can make a much wider one and feel confident about how I'm laying in the colors, how much to beat, all of this kind of stuff. So Crokebrag, it looks very complicated, but in fact, it's actually quite simple. It is a three shaft, 
point twill. So basically, if I was looking at my weaving draft here, and I'm gonna draw this for you, it would basically look like this. I would be threading my warp ends on shaft one, shaft two, shaft three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one and so on, okay? So what happens is, let's just pretend that I'm gonna draw these warp ends, okay, down here. Okay, so those are my pretend warp ends. And when I actually sit at the loom, what it looks like when I lay in my weft yarn is I will see a blip on the shafts that I am activating. So if I'm looking at shaft number one and the weft yarn is gonna be laid in over top of those warp ends, this is kind of what it looks like. One and over one and over one and over one. And then when I go to uh, look at shaft number two and I'm laying in the weft yarn over top of shaft number two warp ends, it kind of looks like this. Two, 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 two. Okay, and then when I go and I do number three, it looks like this, three, 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 okay? So you can see that there is this diagonal happening here, right? So you can see that the weft yarn is being laid in and the way that it's laid in, pick after pick after pick, it looks like this sort of stair step, okay? So it's going, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. So there's a little bit of this. And so this path is called the crooked path. And that's what crookbrag is. Crookbrag means crooked path, which is this. Now, when you actually go and beat all of these weft picks together, it actually just looks like one line. Even though technically, this is what's happening with all of the weft picks. When you actually squish it all together and you beat it really, really hard, what it looks like is this. and it looks like one line, and that's your one line of color. So the way that you can build up color patterns is then you could say, I only want one, 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 one to be this color, and then maybe I choose a different color. Maybe I choose, maybe I choose pink. And so two is gonna look like this, and two is gonna look like this, two is gonna look like this. And then maybe I also say, I want three to also be pink. Okay, so then if you continue on with this sort of color pattern, then we're gonna, you can build up a pattern that looks like this. And this is how you start to get a very graphic pattern happening. This is exactly what we're doing here. So in this case, we are doing this dark purple for maybe say shaft number one, and then shaft number two is white and white, and shaft number three is going to be uh, also white. And then when we move over here, then shaft number one is still purple, shaft number two is still white, shaft number three is now pink. And so as we go from line to line to line, section to section to section, we're making those decisions about what color has to be here, what color has to be here, and what color has to be here. And we can do that using this whole format. Okay, so you can see with this little mini rug project that I've done, um, this is what it looks like on this side, and this is what it looks like on the back side. It's quite different. It's amazing. I like this side. I, I'm trying to figure out which side I like better. Uh, but this side is theoretically the back side. And so you can see this is where I have joined yarns. I have to sort of trim all these off. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to either steam or sort of uh, wet finish this by just rinsing it very, very gently and then rolling it up in a towel, making sure everything is nice and flat and then letting it dry flat. But I'm quite in love with this side too. It's very, very graphic. I wonder if you could kind of do both. 
In any case, you can see I have not yet finished uh, this edge of the rug, and so I need to figure out if I need to tie some knots all along here to make sure that the weft yarn doesn't fall out, so keeping all of that in. But one of my ideas is that I would like to be able to mount this almost like a, almost like a canvas, like a painted canvas, and mount it and frame it, put like a, a walnut frame around the whole thing and then hang it up. So I'm still trying to figure out how I would attach this. Maybe to, maybe I have to uh, staple this to a, like a frame, a canvas stretcher bars, <laughs> something like that. So just a note, if you're curious also, that the warp yarn here is linen. It's, I think it's 12 over four linen is I think what I got. It's rug warp is what I got. And uh, in terms of the weft yarn that I put in here, this is all Harrisville. This is the Harrisville, Harrisville, Highland. It's the thicker one of the two uh, Harrisville yarns that they make. So it is basically all the cones that I have behind me here. <laughs> That's all Harrisville yarn. But I'm actually super, super proud of this piece just because I have been talking for so long on this channel about doing croque brag, about trying to weave rugs. I've been very interested in this whole thing because of the incredibly graphic patterns that you can make. And I have loved the process of learning how this all works, how to set up the loom, different ways of setting up the loom, testing with different kinds of yarn, and then now also being able to sit down at the loom and then just know what color I need to weave in in order to get the effect that I want. I had read this somewhere in someone's Instagram post, maybe it was Angie Parker, about being able to design at the loom. And um, I really do enjoy this, this feeling of not having everything be premeditated. You know, a lot of, a lot of weaving is um, doing calculations ahead of time, sampling, knowing what cloth you want, and then creating the pattern by doing a lot of math and figuring out where every color is going to be, where every pattern block is going to be, just figure out where everything is going to be, and then you create it. With this technique, it's really free flowing. All I do is I put on this, this linen warp with this pretty coarse, you know, warp yarn, and it's set very, very wide. Um, and it's like a blank canvas. And all you do is you sit down and you can paint in the colors that you want, placing them wherever you want. So I, yeah, I've loved doing this project. It's very, very slow though. I will warn you, it's very, very slow. Like I showed you in that little diagram, that little uh, illustration, where you have three different weft picks and how they squash together and they make one line. That means that every single line that's in here that looks like a line of color is actually three weft picks making one line. And so you feel sometimes like you're weaving so much and you're not getting hardly anywhere. <laughs> it feels like you're not getting anywhere, but really you are. It just takes a bit of time. I think it all goes towards that idea of slow cloth and being really mindful about your weaving, you know, um, not necessarily rushing to the finish line. For me, it was very much like a learning process of becoming comfortable with not constantly throwing the shuttle, beat, throw, throw. So having to slow down and even, you know, juggle three different shuttles at a time and stick shuttles no less. I, I'm not a huge fan of stick shuttles, but that is what I used to weave this. Um, it was all very slow, but it became very meditative, very mindful and, um, and I could just, I could arrange the colors and decide on the colors as I came to the section that I was weaving. And maybe each one section took maybe three days or so for me to sit down and weave because I would get interrupted. I would do it before dinner time or whatever. Um, and it just took a bit of time to do, but it, I feel like it's quite worth it. So you can see with this kind of project, if I had changed out the white color and instead used a dark color and had all of these color strips kind of pop out of a dark color, that's absolutely something that's possible. There's so many different effects that you can have just by switching up the order of the different colors and things like that. There's a lot of exploration in play. So I feel like uh, if you are at all interested in learning how to do crook brag, I want to encourage you and help you feel like it is totally doable. And um, even though it may look like it's a little bit intimidating, it's actually very simple. The structure of it's very simple. And uh, I encourage you to check out Debbie's class and she leads you through the whole thing and then works on making a Scandinavian style sampler. And she she does that at a table loom um, and 
also shows you how to do it on a rigid heddle loom. So if what you have is a rigid heddle loom, she has a number of different ways of weaving crook brag on a rigid heddle, either by using uh, pickup sticks or using a second heddle, heddle rod, so many different things. So that is basically it for today. Let me know if you have ever had any interest in doing this kind of weaving or if it has captured your attention. I would just go on Instagram and look for the hashtag crookbrag or crookbrag weaving and you will see the most beautiful graphic uh, colorful designs that are out there right now. It's just, it's a really exciting technique. And uh, if you've ever been curious about it, I encourage you to give it a try. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you like this episode. If you do like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe and come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with craft and color. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.